the big ghost tank. We'll keep you in the know. In the big ghost tank. We'll fix your techie woes and we'll break things and we'll make things till we're all together raking and we'll raise a cup of grog down in the big ghost tank. In the big ghost tank. We'll come and join us in the big ghost tank. In the big ghost tank. We'll come and join us in the big ghost tank. In the big ghost tank. We'll come and join us in the big ghost tank. In the big ghost tank. We'll come and join us in the big ghost tank. In the big ghost tank. We'll come and join us in the big ghost tank. In the big ghost tank. We'll come and join us in the big ghost tank. In the big ghost tank. We'll come and join us in the big ghost tank. In the big ghost tank. We'll come and join us in the big ghost tank. In the big ghost tank. We'll come and join us in the big ghost tank. In the big ghost tank. We'll come and join us in the big ghost tank. In the big ghost tank. We'll come and join us in the big ghost tank. In the big ghost tank. We'll come Hello and welcome to Bilge Tank 098. I am joined, as almost always, by Mr. Sandy McDonald. Hello. Sorry, that was terrible. <laughs> and um, special guest today is Robin Hartley. Um, not related in any way to Tom Hartley, but in fact is related to Tom Hartley. Yeah. Different Tom Hartley. Um, <laughs> he's going to talk us through the... There's more than one Tom Hartley. Tom Hartley of Air yeah. Pie <laughs> is not related to Robin Hartley, okay? But okay. Robin Hartley is related to a Tom Hartley. I, I do it's, have it's a Tom Hartley, yeah, yeah, yeah. We had a moment a minute ago and it's just... We almost had a breakdown. Anyway, he's going to talk us through Task, the... Uh, is it the Amazing? It is. The Amazing, the amazing Shortcut, shortcut keypad. keypad. But yeah. If you had a Force Feedback version, you could call it Task Force. That would be amazing. <laughs> That's, I'm going to do that when I go home. <laughs> um, Get on it. So, yeah, this is the... The amazing shortcut keypad here <laughs> and uh, in a nutshell it's driven by an Arduino and um, it can automate basically anything your keyboard or your mouse can do in any combination is the idea so you press a button and it can do either individual key presses or a, an entire macro you know keyboard shortcuts mouse clicks you've basically taken, the whole taken this to its like insane extent I have. haven't you yeah it's it's a pet project got massively out of hand <laughs> so it sort of started um, I was studying engineering and lots of the software you use, you have to just type these horrible great big commands into it and I just got so bored doing it and I thought there must be there must be a better way of doing it and so I created this sort of little thingy here um, which I just hard coded it, literally just all the different commands I needed and pressed them and it worked so well, it saved me so much time I thought I've, I've got to actually do something with this. There could be a market for that. Yeah, right? yeah. Just, just in the time saving, just even if it was just like design software for engineers the time saving just for that um, there was a market for so I, I sort of it got really out of hand and I started doing different iterations and this sort of thing but it, it ended up um, with this so I, if I can I'd like to give you a demo um, so the other one that's made with an Adafruit trellis yeah so this is right? yes you and that's what you guys said this is actually uh, I got this from you guys so this is just um, one of those this one oh yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, from good luck with that. <laughs> better to look at that screen than okay, yeah, that yeah. screen. Um, like a silicon <laughs> button there which goes onto this um, driver board which just got a load of LEDs in and then um, you can see how it sort of comes up into this. And so underneath it uh, you might be able to see just the USB port on there is an Arduino uh, and that's basically all there is to it. There's a bit of clever software in there but um, essentially it's just a, some kind of button and an Arduino in there. So, uh, alongside this I did a load of desktop software to actually program it. So is it worth showing that? If yeah. If I can. Let's, let's do that. Uh, <laughs> I can get the correct button. <laughs> I am as always this doing one. something incredible. Yes. One. yes. Got it. I just figured that all out um, and how it works and now I know and I'll probably never get to use it. But yeah. Oh, shit. It's magic. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the nice thing, I mean, we've all seen keypads and numpads and stuff like this before. So the actual hardware itself isn't that special apart from that it's just super hackable I and mean, that the source code and everything will be open source but what's really cool is the actual uh, interface which I'm programming it with so um, this is purely drag and drop so you can just drag and drop whatever you want and then it'll basically do it so um, I'm going to do a quick one where I'm going to type out a piece of text so um, this one will be a hello world and then I'm going to do a shift and home and you'll, you'll see what all this does in a second and then uh, control and B. And if anyone's familiar with, um, and then I press upload, and that's it sends it all over onto the keypad. So that's now on this uh, top button here. So when I now press that, uh, if I go over to um, Word and press that button, it types out hello world, highlights it, and then makes it bold, <laughs> all before you can even register what's going on. So that's a really Simple demo. This couldn't um, be used for evil ever, could it? Oh yes, it absolutely could. <laughs> um, and I, I had to. I made a comic Sandy's sans. disappeared <laughs> behind the team. Um, <coughs> I had to make myself a comic sans button, which um, I mean, you'll see. So uh, <laughs> this just reformats it, goes through, does all the keyboard shortcuts to completely reformat it, and that, in a couple of seconds, was maybe about eleven different keyboard shortcuts. So wow. you can see how that all uh, gets together. But for something actually useful, I'll try something useful. 
Um, I'm focusing at Sandy. Are we focusing. all right? I can't, I can't tell if that's in focus now or... <laughs> No, you, you've got I like a two second delay on the screen, so it's basically invisible. Is that bad? <laughs> that's, that's pretty good. Well, that's cool. We'll leave it there. I saw someone writing Lightroom there. Lightroom's definitely a um, game for this sort of thing. That sort of application. One of those things that has very oh. convoluted keyboard shortcuts. I noticed yeah. Eagle has a lot of this where if you set the trace width in Eagle, it was easier for me to rather than use the navigation menus to set oh, the trace right. width in yeah. Eagle. To type in the command bar at the top, basically set the trace width to 8mm or yeah, yeah, yeah. 16 mil. So this kind of thing, if it could focus the command bar in Eagle, set the trace width to like your three predefined trace yeah, widths, yeah, 8, yeah. 16, 20 mil, which is what we generally use, then those shortcut buttons would be fantastically sure. useful in that sense. That's the really same cool, with yeah. turning the grid on and off, turning grid snap on and off, adjusting grid yeah, snap, yeah, adjusting yeah, yeah. whether or not you're doing a radius curve or if you're doing a snap or a 90 degree corner and all sorts of little things oh. like that that you're constantly shifting in and yeah. out of. It's, um, it's the things where they're just, they're specific, like you use them enough that they're really annoying and you have to repeat them loads, but they're um, not quite general enough that there's an actual easy way to access them in the software. Yeah. So like say if you're, you know, if you're setting your traces to a certain width, which you're only going to use this time round, but it's going to annoy you for the three hours which you're designing this one board or whatever, <laughs> um, which we've all been there. It's great for that kind of thing. So just one more useful example I've got, because um, that was a sort of a silly example type of stuff out, but this is uh, typing out annoying bits of um, code. So anyone who's dabbling so this sort of thing. Get add, minus, minus, minus all. This, this is <laughs> yeah. the one. This is the one. So um, this uh, just types out a, a double nested uh, for loop. Um, so when I give that a press, it just types it out for me like that. And you, that's just the sort of silly thing where you use it so much, you just wish you had it there. And you can just put all the, the basic code and blocks on it and just type away. Oh, in this case, it would be a try catch in Python that I'd be using. Yes. In yeah. Java. Yeah, yeah. That's try all you are. Catch catch yeah, yeah. And also the shebag at the top of it. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to have to get those. Those. <laughs> So We will, we will build one. <laughs> Is it t probably time for a, a shameless plug that this yes. is on uh, Kickstarter at the minute? Um, but the cool yeah. thing yeah. is that um, <laughs> oh. you have successfully picture and picture. Oh, file. oh, fantastic! I, cool. Um, so yes, yeah, it's on Kickstarter. But the cool thing is it's all going completely open source. So instead of actually like making kits and then sending them out to you and charging you for that sort of thing, I'm just uh, releasing all the stuff I've done so far. So there's actually four designs which I'm re releasing, which I'm going to try and hold all of them up. This is going to go badly. Uh, these ones here, so everything from a simple um, button on a breadboard, which you can just uh, tweak and adapt to do whatever you want. You know, you could put, you know, you're talking about snaps and like grid snaps. Yeah. You could change that switch out there for a toggle switch, and suddenly you've got a physical switch to turn your snaps <laughs> on and off. Grid on, <laughs> grid on. Yeah, like a really big one, like airplane style. Hold on, I've got one somewhere. Where did it go? Yeah. Oh, I really want there. that. Now. There's a big throw breaker switch yeah. there, which would work quite well for that. That's so cool. Um, so that well, that one's just, I mean, really simple, really cheap, and you can just adapt it. Um, this this next one uses these like knock on um, that way. That's the one. These are um, Nokia style um, like phone buttons, but they're they're like dead cheap and quite fun to use as well. And then I've got the two the two ones you see. So the original design I made, and the um, the, the new one, which is like the proper one, mechanical keys and lovely. Those keys are very nice in that. I like your so choice nice. of colours as well. Yeah, I. I Bought a lot of keycaps and only used a few of them. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, that's all, all going completely open source, all the designs, and it'll show you how to use them, how to tweak it, all that sort of thing. So um, yeah, if you fancy that, tickles your fancy, give it a look. Nice. Very nice. Yeah. So yeah, so, But you kind of went the, the more controversial route with the Kickstarter, I didn't did, you? And yeah. You don't offer hardware, you're, you're offering to release yeah. everything all the, so all the it out. Essentially yeah. it's like pay for your time to work on this and then yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. give it away to everyone. This is and seems also, like a good deal really. Well this is the thing and there's I mean what you, you see the finished product here, there are so many failed prototypes behind this which <laughs> I've or, I've had to pay for and that sort of thing. And there's a bit of stuff to do. But um essentially yeah, I, I did all the numbers, I ran all the numbers, all the boring stuff and I found out it worked out cheaper um for their end customer than if I just bought all the stuff, assembled kits and you had to do all this sort just, of stuff. Just hand over the design and let kind exactly. of the make community run with it, really. Isn't and it? also do whatever they want. You know, if you want one of these big, um, like, pulley <laughs> switches, then Quite, you can yeah. do it. So um, that was the thinking of it. I, I don't know if it was a stroke of genius or a really terrible idea. Um, <laughs> I'll know in about 20 days. Until, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I think that's um, a good rundown of the, the project. But, yeah, best of luck with Thank you. Me. Might need it. Guys, <laughs> it's on Kickstarter. Go and give it yeah. a look. 
definitely creeping up as well. I say, shut up and take my money. <laughs> so, right. yeah, it's, linked, it's linked to the uh, YouTube description. Oh, you can back it. So, yeah. Top job. Yeah. So, nice. yeah, I was kind of uh, said to Robin that uh, there's a, a chap called Rama Works mm. um, who makes um, really nicely kind of machined. Um, Let's uh, let's have a look at this page. <laughs> these are super overrated. Yeah, these are just like really like yeah. there's like fidget spinners that are just like yeah, <laughs> just really like work, works of art. Um, Spin away. And then he, he does a lot of um, a lot of like mechanical keyboard stuff. So lots of um, just insanely expensive. Um, what are the bright and coloured piano keys? Machined aluminium. <laughs> Uh, keys, key caps, which Rich are just, I think, I think they cost like between fifty and seventy dollars, which, Bonded. to be honest, seems a bit much for a for a single key cap. But, um, but I I hang around on the um, the mechanical keyboard um, Reddit or subreddit, and um, <laughs> yeah. the uh, shipping, the uh, yeah, the shipping of the um, the M the... one on there came out, and there are so many nice pictures of it all over this this yeah. place. So many people. Wishing they'd bought it when they could have done. So that this this is the kind of equivalent uh, that Rambo Works has done, which is like a you know a macro yeah yeah mini macro keyboard type thing, very similar idea but like way more expensive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is definitely yeah. maker friendly. This, yeah yeah yeah. Which, so, to be honest, they're not really in competition because that is a, a proper beautiful finished product, whereas this is for. Uh, someone to hack and tweak and do what they like with really so. Well to be honest, I mean if someone had a CNC machine then they could make, you know, they could make something you're right, similar actually. with the, the same kind of yeah. guts, guts inside it. You know. That's a really good point actually. Uh, yeah. If you do have a CNC machine and if you do make a really nice enclosure like that, you can send us. Uh, yeah, so that's that. So I think yeah, we're do you like machine yeah. The other oh, thing we're gonna mention good. is yeah. not that um, <laughs> not that oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You're, you're actually obscuring my incredibly um, hastily prepared <laughs> oh, yeah. magnificent Sorry. e ink promo for this, which is probably. Oh, uh, yes! E paper! <laughs> <laughs> we need to do that the magic hands, So, don't that we? <laughs> hopefully is the correct hashtag um, to promote. What is he? Tech, tech for Good Awards yeah, is tech. kind of like bringing attention to tech that is doing good, I guess. Mm. Um, so that's been all over Twitter over the last um, a week or so. People have been doing some interesting kind of promo ideas for it, light up LED screens and magnets and lettering and all sorts of stuff. But this is this is oh, my entry. Strike. This is the uh, <laughs> super duper. Yay. Spell strike. Yay! This is a promo section. So this yeah. is a uh, Josh who was on Bilch Tank. Must be a couple of months ago yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Um, edgy blocks. Which Josh. Is... Josh is now four. Is he 14? 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, I think so, yeah, 14. it's incredible. Um, Two, yeah, yeah, it's like one of the most like, inspiring little, uh, well, like young adults, I guess. We genius. Could, you could imagine, yeah. he, he just, yeah, so basically spends like all, like, goes to school because he's a, a school kid, um, and then spends all of his spare time like coding edgy blocks, which is basically like a, a kind of block based. Um, like, Python, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's like Python, but a kind of block based uh, system for coding with Python. Um, really, ha has really kind of taken off. Uh, Josh kind of like takes it round, like all the the maker fairs and things like that, kind of like showing it off. And uh, yeah, it's just a really amazing project. So um, you can either go to the Tech for Good Awards webpage and vote there. Um, or you can, you, use the, you can use the hashtag blocks dot com as well, mm. or, or use the hashtag. Yeah. And you can actually do both. So if if you do both, if you do it on the website and with the hashtag, then it counts as. Uh, I think hashtags two keep counting. Yeah, they do. How many do they? Going, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. I don't yeah. understand how they how they're going <laughs> to regulate that. Oh, you've got a new backer. We could both have a botnet. Thank you. <laughs> I hope you went for the eight hundred pound reward. That would be good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, yes, so it's mine now. <laughs> so vote for I Josh. Um, yeah, thank you. So that's that's that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Now I wholly believe in kind of uh, supporting open source projects like yeah. this. It doesn't get. I, we were talking earlier about NumPy only recently getting funding despite it. being yeah. basically a cornerstone of Python. And there's there's a lot of open source hardware and software projects out there that people have poured lots of time and effort mm. and money into, um, and 
very, very rarely get any kind of reward out of it other than the, the simple gratification of having accomplished it's, something, yeah. of course. But uh, interestingly, uh, what is it called again? Sonic Pie. Sonic Pie is uh, Patreon yeah. funded. Yeah. So, oh, is it really? While we're, while we're on the topic of oh. um, <laughs> funding people to do awesome stuff with software, go Patreon fund Sonic Pie. Sam Aaron doing uh-huh. good stuff. Get in. Cool. Yeah. Unicorn hats. Again. So, uh, yeah, the next thing is. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone tweeted us about this. Um, it is a Unicorn Hat HD simulator, so basically you can um, like test code out on it before you actually run it on your Unicorn Hat HD. Um, yeah. And they've got a little gif of it in action here, so yeah, uh, um, yeah, it pretty so much cool, just looks man. like a Unicorn Hat HD, and you can. I was run. trying to figure out how it ran so smoothly because uh, a long, long time ago when I was writing the software for um, Doc 3K. I didn't have a display with me because I was on a train or something, so I wrote a quick simulator in Pygame to simulate the whole display so that I could write uh, examples and stuff for it and then see how they might look. Mm. And it was so very slow, and then I kind of <laughs> did the math and figured out how many pixels I was drawing, because it's, it's 16 characters by 3 rows with 5 by 8 pixels per character, which comes out at 1920 pixels, I think. Which which is a few more, it's about seven and a half times more than Unicorn Hat HD, if mm. I remember correctly. So yeah, it it was slow because I was just updating so many rectangles, probably <laughs> slowly. Yeah. Uh, someone in the chat said something's happening with sound, is it? Oh, we oh thought, dear. We thought it should be better Hello. this week, because uh, Paul spent a while kind of tweaking yeah, it. Yeah, to, yeah. It's good. No one else has mentioned the sound, anyway. so it could just mm. be... We can't do anything about it live, so we'll just uh, we'll carry on. We'll just um, have to yell. <laughs> we'll be louder. We'll, we'll be really quiet. We microphone. don't know which way it is. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, that's true. It could yeah. be too loud. <laughs> I like the way that they've done the code example for this. So it's basically they've got to try and accept. So try to import Unicorn uh, HD. Um, and then if there's an import error, which I presume will happen when yeah, the hat's not attached. Not attached or... That it basically runs any error simulator. within the import yeah. script. So like any any exception raised within a library or at the point you import it, I think, is it becomes an import error. Yeah. Yeah. So that's quite a neat way of doing it. So. Yeah. So that's linked to the description as well. So have a look at that. So the final thing is <laughs> oh, all yes. well, this e-paper do, stuff we've got knocking uh, around. Let's um. Well, first spot to this Inky Fat. Uh, you all have seen Inky Fat already because Sandy has made the most magnificent photos for it that I've ever seen. It's, yeah, that's so incredibly good adorable. Oh. Yeah, so this is the. Where's, where's the. Uh, at the <laughs> I walked oh, into yeah. the bilge tank <laughs> and Sandy had set this thing up stage <laughs> with a drop of actual ink on the paper and a pen like that. It went to ridiculous extents, but yeah, they look really fantastic. One of my. One of my kind of uh, obsessions is uh, fountain pens. So kind of, uh, <laughs> oh, I see. I've got. So I've got. Mod- ready to go on that. Front. I've got. <laughs> yeah, I've got a modest collection of uh, fountain pens and various. I e- can't write and... with a fountain pen to save my life. It yeah. goes horribly wrong. Yeah, I don't write with them often. To be honest. <laughs> you know, just a collection. Yeah. Okay. They just leak all over the place, and you just uh, <laughs> all well, the, tr- hands. the tricky thing is, you have to have really good quality paper. Like most paper, ah, okay. yeah. if you use a uh, fountain pen on it, it just kind of bleeds into the paper and literally. Portable, yeah. so, uh, um, fountain pen pro tips. Oh, Ra- <laughs> yeah, Rachel's of the chat. She's another kind of stationary geek. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I imagine the combination of fountain pens and washer tape is probably uh, yeah. got a few people going. <laughs> so this is. Oh, actually, I'll get the. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, the uh, inky fat is like the the first and the tiniest. <laughs> of the e-ink displays that we're yep. releasing, and as you may have seen, although it's again obscured, right down here is um, a 640 by 384 pixel e-ink display that I'm currently working on with... Uh, there we go. Yeah, there we go. We, we break yeah, our board. Show. So we've got this um, e-paper breakout, which is basically inky fat in breakout form, and you yeah. can connect either inky fat's display to it, or to show the, the medium sized display to it, or the really, really huge display to it. Do you want Do you to be my fabulous close up model? Yes. I wasn't very good at this before, so that's <laughs> it. Practice makes perfect. There we go. Ta-da. 
Dun, 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 dun. So yeah, you can use this basically with any. You will have trouble potentially using it with a small microcontroller because you need to store the display buffer for these displays and 212 by 104 pixels or 640 by 384 pixels are a lot of pixels to be storing in a modest size <coughs> microcontroller. So you will probably have to use this with something like a Pi Zero or an ARM Cortex or something a little bit beefy. But you'll be able to basically power these from a LiPo, stick them up on a wall like this one for example and just have it display a little wireless status display. Oh, Sandy's got the theory up yep. on the screen now as well. Oh. So these are... Uh, a lot of people have been asking about the kind of... about the refresh rate and yeah, the stuff like that. Yeah, um, And about how they actually work. And there, there seemed to be a bit of confusion where... we put the video of it refreshing up um, and kind of said that it takes 15 seconds to, to refresh. Um, and I think some people thought that 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 15 second video that we showed was actually um, was actually like an animation that we were displaying on it rather than the actual refresh oh, no, that of is the, the, the actual display. refresh process but it's bizarre essentially what happens is um, the reason we call this a three color display rather than a, a two color display which would be black and red um, is because the white is actually a color in the display as well um, so there are three different colored pigments um, black, white and red and basically what happens is um, as you'll see in the in the, uh, the illustration here um, you have loads of little uh, capsules with liquid in and coloured pigment particles um, and basically by passing a voltage across the each of those little um, capsules you pull the, the different pigments up or, up or down um, so in the bicolour version, they're basically just either positively or negatively charged, exactly, so depending yeah, yeah. on what charge you do, they'll yeah. the yeah. reverse, and that's yeah. inherently quick. Yeah. But but <laughs> when you have three different colours, basically you have to like pull them all down, and then pull one colour back up, and then the other colour, and then the other colour. Uh, it's it's um, so a yeah, lot that, more complicated. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's why it takes so long to, to refresh it. Um, um, but you get the advantage of having you could actually, if you, if you get rid of all the picture and picture yeah. stuff, I will run this uh, screen refresh oh, yeah, cycle. Ooh. So it, it may be a little bit terrifying, but <laughs> there would be bam. Run. Come on, run, 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 run. Oh, oh yeah. here we go. <laughs> <laughs> we need to file and do the, the cycle music. <laughs> <laughs> And it's like the old Pokemon games, you know, you used to get in a battle. <laughs> so the, uh, you can actually see the picture, uh, the <laughs> sticker on the back, because there's so much light in here reflecting through it. Mm. The, uh, so the back, the back story to this photo is that <laughs> when Phil and I were um, hacking apart the bilge tank oh, set to put the porthole, the porthole, oh, the porthole, you can see the porthole. <laughs> um, Phil was on the other side of it, and I took a photo of Phil's face through the through the porthole that had just been freshly cut. Yeah, it's um, such a fantastic photo. Which then became Phil's Twitter avatar. Mm. I was um, prepared for circular Twitter avatars yeah. <laughs> so far in advance. Um, yeah, so that, that's the big one. That is, how many pixels is that? That Six. is 640 by 384 pixels, yeah. so that's a lot of space to play with. There's also, uh, I think, two other sizes, so this is one of them. Um, so that's a kind of, I guess, Slightly bigger than hat size. I don't know what resolution that um, is. So no, if we John thank you well. I'll just uh, leave that. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so I guess it's, it's a pie we found uh, Yeah, it's slightly smaller than the hyper pixel display. Um, but I guess it'll probably have to be one of our white hats. Wats. 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 What? What? Nobody gets that. <laughs> It's a it's a JavaScript thing, isn't it? There's a talk about JavaScript showing some of the um, rather more idiosyncratic things that happen when you attempt to do anything in JavaScript. <laughs> Look it up, JavaScript WAT W A T. And then I think there's one that's kind of halfway. There's one that's halfway between this size and the big one as well. Um, there are displays of all shapes and sizes. So I think we'll be selling the the breakout and all of the different display sizes as, as well. Um, whether we'll sell all four, I'm not exactly sure. I don't uh, know. But, but 
certainly a range of different I sizes. Think, I think I people will want the big one for many, many reasons. Yeah. I mean, the refresh rate might be slow, but there are a lot of things you can display as a status screen that you can update kind of overnight or every hour. Um, like the weather, the date, the time, well not necessarily the time, but the weather, the date, a calendar, appointments list, um, status information about your home, the environment, graphs, we still haven't done graphs, we need to try graphs, um, just general things that you want to display as information without consuming any power and without it being a glaringly bright screen that glows kind of in the dark. Yeah, because that's one problem that people with the, uh, the official touchscreen and hyperpixel and all these things have is that they want to do something <coughs> that they can use in low light or at night and stuff like that and it's it's glaring bright well, all yeah. the time. Well actually with that big one that's about the same size as a, a Kindle. Mm -hmm. So I guess you could make your own kind of open source uh, oh, wow. e reader. Incredibly slow e reader. <laughs> yeah. Just turn to the next page. <laughs> you basically start reading a page and you have to <laughs> reflect, reflect to the next page when you start reading a page. <laughs> it would make you savour it wouldn't it? You know yeah. you'd really have to enjoy it as you went along. <laughs> or just have the text yeah. really really small. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Maybe do half the screen and then update. I still haven't got a partial oh, yeah. update working on this one yet, but you could read half the screen while you update the other half and then yeah. continue cycling through. Who knows? Fridge notice board, that's a good idea. Mm, Complete R. Oh, we need to find a font that looks like magnetic letters. Oh, yes. That could be fun. Yeah, there's bound to be one. <laughs> and then always. Da font. <laughs> yeah, it could could do magic mirror as well. I don't. I don't know if you need light running through the magic mirror for it to be visible, but it's well. You could probably front mm. light it. So if you had it inside yeah. the mirror, you could have like edge lighting oh, to okay, illuminate yeah. it. That, that would work. We've got that mirror panel up there. Yeah. We should definitely give it a go. They are actually uh, slightly transparent. These displays. I can probably. We could see the pit. The, uh, yeah, you the um, so, yeah. yeah. So you can see light does shine through, but. It has a funny kind of Ooh. colour cast, um, so I think backlighting is probably not feasible. I think the reason it looks a bit odd is because the back of the display is actually like mirrored. Um, so, so I think front lighting or kind of edge lighting is probably the way to go. Um, you win at t-shirts today apparently Sunday. This <laughs> t-shirt is yeah. from, oh, I forgot the name of it now, Cotton Bureau. Um, they have loads of really cool t-shirts. It's kind of like um, QWERTY or whatever the other one is that Paul gets his t-shirts from. I can't remember the name of that. T-Fury? T-Fury? T-Fury. There are many of yeah. them. Anyway, um, so we have a Python library as always for nice. Inky Fans, um, which makes it fairly straightforward to, to do stuff with it. The kind of um, I think the USP with Inkyfat is that um, we have some really nice uh, demos with it. Um, so we also have a tutorial to kind of get you started with it. it tells you how to install the library, how to how to run the examples. Um, so we have uh, we've got a calendar example. Um, tiny calendar. Tiny calendar. Um, we have a weather station. Um, so this actually grabs your IP address and then uses well, your IP address. In fact, uses the, the city and country code. I haven't put the IP address. Ah, right, I thought you put that. Right. Yeah. Was that because it's slightly sinister? Because yeah. it is slightly sinister yeah. and not always accurate. But right, okay. I might try that at some point. Um, yep, so that shows the, the time and date and temperature and pressure and a little icon to. Um, Tell you what the weather type is. Um, oh, I, like the, I like the treasure chest in that as well. That's, the, that's <laughs> attention to detail right there. Just, yeah, so that silly backdrop. So. That's yeah. the. Uh, have we got a, no. a photo of it somewhere? Um, yeah, no. so it's, it's this one actually. It's in the GIF. Um, so this was Lydia that um, put together this incredibly cute little um, oh, image. Okay. Yeah, yeah. This image just flashed onto the Inky fans when you buy them. Um, so if you buy one, <laughs> then it'll have that oh. that image on it. Um, so that's also the backdrop for the examples as well. Um, so, yeah, so there's the weather one, there is a name badge, um, which we had a bit of fun with, with various um, like geeky movie <laughs> references. Um, then there's how to display text on it, um, which is really easy. Um, 
images are a bit more tricky to display. I think Phil's going to try and demo that now. <laughs> um, I, I can't because my Pi uh, is in oh. 640 by 480 resolution. Oh, what? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I have, I've done well, that's it plenty. Photoshop. The display's only 212 by 104. <laughs> so yeah. Maybe if I yeah. restart my Pi with an HDMI cable connected, it will, it will start to put a more, yeah. a more so, civil resolution. So basically, to display images, what you have to do is you have to um, make your image in index colour mode with three colours in the order white, black, red. Um, so you can either do that with uh, GIMP, which is the kind of open source uh, Linux graphics package. Um, and it, it tells you in the tutorial how to do it with GIMP. Um, or you can do it in Photoshop, which yeah, is Photoshop slightly, slightly you easier. You need to use a legacy I export mode, or it messes up the order of yeah. the colour palette somewhere. You know, so save for is. web? I think you have to save it for web, yes, don't you? Yes, legacy. I, I'm going to have to look into that and see if I can extract the index color palette and, and do some automation stuff to, to make it easier to play with images. Yeah. Someone's asking if you could use that as a display for a run speed <laughs> with an incredibly <laughs> slow <laughs> refresh rate. Um, You'd have to have a frame buffer to, to do that. Someone was actually asking yeah, about yeah, that today, you, weren't they? You could effectively do that, but the, it takes so long to refresh that you're only going to get like reasonably two frames every minute, I guess. Because you want to display the frame for at least as much time as it takes to refresh it. Mm. Otherwise, you're basically just going to be refreshing constantly. But yeah, you can. No reason why not. You can write a frame buffer driver in Python. All it has to do is uh, create a little device node and then you just fire information at that in a predetermined format and grab it out and display on the screen. But I, I've done something like that for... Um, what was it? It was a, a ST70... No, it wasn't an ST70. It was a, a display anyway that I made a frame buffer driver Was for. it the DF robot one? No, it wasn't. Yeah. It was a, a, a... What was it? A... <coughs> black on white or white on black backlit display that I got from uh, Hobbytronics long, long ago, mm -hmm. and then recently tried tinkering with again and found that I could update it so fast that I could actually create four color grayscale with it. Which is cool. uh, someone's asking about how long it takes mm -hmm. the image to fade. Well, um, that kind of depends. Um, Physics. If you have <laughs> the um, if you have the display ribbon cable connected then it will kind of leak slightly. Um, so over the course of a day or two, it will kind of fade. So I, I think you need to put that to the test. You need to flash this image on two displays, leave one with it connected and one with it not, yeah. and see if there's a meaningful difference. Because that, that seems odd. But yeah, yeah imagine the board, the PCB, and all the components act as an antenna for interference and stuff, which yeah. can certainly yeah. cause weirdness. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we, yeah, I mean, it's probably just like either voltage kind of leaking out, or well, not, I guess it's, it must be leaking it's in. It's still actually. ink yeah. in a liquid capsule, so yeah. basically a whole bunch of factors can move it around. It's not, yeah. it's not fixed per se. Yeah, temperature affects it as well. Yeah, that, okay. that affects the refresh rate. I guess little. if you warm it up and give it a good shape. <laughs> I feel that this, we could have like ten, all the different temperatures, proper experimental. See how oh, it goes. Of course, yeah. you guys are saying oh, yeah, get to it, yeah, science yeah, yeah. people. Do the science. We'll come back next week. You'd have to have it all over. <laughs> have to have at least three at each temperature. Put one in a course, yeah. yeah. Do yeah. proper replicas. Spin it around <laughs> at high velocity and see if yeah. you can get the ink to separate. Yeah. Yeah. So it's best to kind of update it daily. Mm. Yeah. Um, I flashed an image onto my one uh, yesterday lunchtime, roughly, um, and it was actually this image here. Um, by lunchtime today, it's kind of like the the white on the background had kind of gone slightly yeah, pink. Yeah, it's going very pink. Uh, if um, you don't mind a slightly pink background, the, the actual image was, the actual image was fine, but the white background did kind of like bled slightly. Mm. Um, it's like the red's but, coming through, I guess. On the but yeah, certainly yeah. about a day. Um, I wonder if it depends which way up you leave in various other factors. We could get yeah. way too involved in this. Yeah, we should do a blog <laughs> post about it. Um, yeah, so that's, that's, that's Inky Fat. Um. Uh, we, oh, you know, you mentioned the, uh, the thing. We've, we've, we've done everything. Yeah, we've covered, covered everything. I suspect that is a wrap, so um, cool. don't forget to uh, back 
Our good man here is Kickstarter. Yeah. Well, liberate his wonderful project so yeah. the wider make community can uh, kind of make it into it a magical, wonderful thing. Yeah. Oh, I just want to see to toggle switches with different things on. I really want to see now. <laughs> so yeah, that's a challenge. Mm. Like the the ones for the, the cover or Oh yeah, like oh, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> actually, if you get a big red button, you got to sell a big red button. We that's do so sell tempting. A big red button, yeah. um, to like you know like uh, in games we have a, like a nuclear bomb or something and you just uh, this, flick it up. I actually tried recently with an arcade button and a pie cave making a rage quit button. Oh yeah, yeah, which that's just hits nice. Alt F4. Yes, perfect. Because <laughs> I, I, I am a bit precious when it comes to video games. And if I'm losing, I, I will rage quit. I, I, I'm a rage quitter. I'm a dirty rotten rage. So I'm going to do it in style. Way, because, uh, <laughs> if I'm going to rage quit, I'm going to do it properly. You could pretend to be Donald Trump with the uh, nuclear oh. button. Oh. <laughs> Flick. Yeah. <laughs> so we've got yeah. plans in motion for uh, Bilge Tank 100, which will be Ooh. two weeks today. Um, Excellent. So yeah, we've got crazy plans. Uh, crazy plans. Fireworks. I know nothing <laughs> of these plans. Yeah, I don't know if I should mention it, but because uh, it may not happen. But uh, yeah, we're um, we're thinking about trying to do a hundred different projects in the course of uh, one oh. bilge tank. A hundred projects. A hundred pro projects. Yeah. You have to have a room full of people behind you all doing different what projects. What Yeah, <laughs> so, going, so basically just have the, the whole desk just like littered with lots of different demos and projects. And, yeah. <laughs> so that might happen, might not, but yeah. That really might be a bit crazy. Yeah. That sounds um, like live demos at the best of times. You could bring back all the products from each of the hundred so far <laughs> and then show them all up as they go. <laughs> if we do a hundred, we can actually work out the success rate as well, like the percentage success rate. Oh, that's true. Um, yeah. That's yeah. Cool. Have you ever watched Ashens on YouTube? He, um, yes. He's a prolific yeah. reviewer of TAT and he does this thing called um, uh, 10 reviews in 10 minutes or something like that, where mm. he gets 60 seconds to review each bit of TAT. You should totally steal that. I don't know how he gets thousands of people just to watch him just hold something in front of the camera and just talk about it. I, w I wish I had no audience like that. I think the trick talking. is to be the first person to do it. Yeah. And then you've got your edge and then you build an audience and then once That's you've built an audience and got that momentum, it's very hard to slow it down unless you just stop uploading. I think okay. food ones are my favourite. Yeah. <laughs> there's, there's a lot where he's basically just eating these horrible, like, oh. you know, 50 year old cans of like food and stuff like that. And, oh. Oh. <laughs> that slides out like, the can and maintains oh, that's the not shape. alright. That's but not okay. Obscure Chinese delicacies. <laughs> yeah. And that rotten fish thing we have in Scandinavia, I can't remember the name of it. Oh, like, yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, it's it's like, basically uh, fermented yeah, underground. It's, oh. Yeah, it's literally rotten fish. Yeah. So, yeah, check out Ash. Nah, I've been missing out, YouTube. haven't I? With the <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Thank Don't you very forget much for joining to us. like, uh, comment, and subscribe. Mm -hmm. yeah. We'll see you next week. That's a wrap. Bye bye. bye.